Let's just start this video with this part out of the way. Cinestill 400D. This is a fantastic film. If you haven't shot any yet, please go get some, go shoot it. Cinestill, please keep making it. I spent 10 days in Yellowstone National Park with my Pentax 6x7, and I took four rolls of Cinestill 400D with me. It was the only film I brought, and I thought, I'm taking a bit of a risk here with a film that I don't really know, I've never used, and I'm not sure about the characteristics of it. But it was a risk that was worth taking, and I'm so happy with the results. In the second half of July, I had a reservation at the Fishing Bridge RV Park. Now, I've been to Yellowstone before, maybe three or four times, but I've never actually stayed in the park, so this was pretty exciting to have a camping spot right in the middle of the park. And I also hate to say, but I really kind of lucked out this year. You might have heard that there have been some devastating problems with flooding at Yellowstone early this summer. And I think because of that, a lot of people canceled plans that they had originally had. And I have to admit, I was very close to canceling my plans as well. However, in June, roads started opening up and Yellowstone National Park said they were going to honor reservations made for camping within the park. So I decided these reservations are hard enough to get. I'm gonna keep mine. I'm gonna take my trailer up and stay and see how it goes. Now, the way this worked out for me is I think the attendance at the park was probably down lower than what it normally would be at the height of summer. So I probably lucked out in that sense, getting to see some places and travel around the park without having to fight quite as many crowds as is typical. But anytime you visit a national park, there are ways to avoid the crowds if you're willing to put in the work for it. So we'll talk about that a little later in the video, but I do want to get started showing you my experience going out and shooting 120 Cinestill 400D on the Pentax 6x7. Since I was in the park for 10 days, there was no need to rush for my photography, and I was there with my family, so I spent the first half taking the kids out and seeing the sights. You know, things like going to see Old Faithful, going to see the Yellowstone Grand Canyon, watch the wildlife, uh, see the hot springs, and basically driving around and enjoying this immense, beautiful park as much as we could. The great thing about that is it gave me a chance to kind of scout out different areas and decide what I want to shoot. I did get a chance during those first few days to film some Super 8 footage on my Elmo Super 8mm camera, and I will post that in the next week or two so you can check that out as well. If you haven't seen Super 8 footage I've shot with my Elmo 1012 SXL camera, then you can see some of that right here. This is some footage that I shot in Tahiti very early this summer when I was there shooting a Shark Week show for Discovery Plus. Uh, and you can watch that on Discovery Plus if you like. The show, I mean, not my Super 8 footage. Unfortunately, that didn't make the cut. So after that first half of the trip, and when I had shot out my two cartridges of Super 8 film, I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to shoot with 400D. And I was really looking to see how this film was going to handle shooting landscapes. And more importantly, what's the color going to be like? How is the color going to react to this environment? Luckily, Yellowstone is full of incredible landscapes, and it is absolutely gorgeous. However, everyone thinks you're in a national park to do landscape photography. It's a layup, right? It should be the easiest thing in the world. But the truth is, it's not. There are huge challenges in landscape photography, and even more so, I feel like, when you've got the pressures of being at a national park. And truthfully, let's be honest, there's no layups in photography. Well, that's not entirely true. Maybe there's two. Gas stations at night, and women in not very many clothes. But what can I say? I like a challenge. The first spot in Yellowstone I wanted to go to to shoot 400D was Mammoth Hot Springs. I had just been there the previous afternoon with my family, and it's the furthest spot from the Fishing Bridge RV park that I knew I wanted to visit to photograph. And I wasn't really thrilled with the evening light at Mammoth Hot Springs. Most of the travertine terraces at the hot springs tend to face the east, and with the sun setting to the west, I wasn't really thrilled with the afternoon and evening light. So I decided I wanted to get up really early before sunrise and try to make that drive to get all the way out there to Mammoth Hot Springs, which is about an hour and change, and see if I could photograph it in the morning light. Like every day, I'm gonna start with a cup of coffee. So I got up early, I put the kettle on, got ready to make some drip coffee and my travel mug. As that was brewing, I got my camera ready, packed my stuff, took the film, and headed out the door. Now, even though this was five in the morning, you can see the light was coming up, it was getting brighter. 
I knew I had to get going and that I didn't have much time before the sun was going to come up over those hills. One thing I noticed as I was driving though was how beautiful this park is in the early morning. It was absolutely gorgeous. There's fog coming off the Yellowstone River. The smoke out of the hot springs was billowing. Soft yellow light coming over the horizon was absolutely gorgeous. I really wanted to stop and take some photographs, but I knew that if I did, I was gonna lose all my time. I would get to Mammoth Hot Springs and it would be way too bright and harsh light. And I really didn't wanna miss my chance to get early morning light at Mammoth Hot Springs. One of the great things about leaving super early in the morning though, is that the roads are clear. It was also really beautiful to see the bison and elk and wildlife up early in the morning and moving around in that gorgeous light. I wanted so badly to stop and take a photograph, but I knew I just didn't have the time. As I was driving though, the sun started to peak up over the horizon and I was really hoping that the mountains to the east would block that sun for as long as it possibly could so that when I arrived, the sun would be just coming over the edge of those mountains. However, the further I went and the closer I got to Mammoth Hot Springs, it started to become clear to me that I was gonna miss my moment. But the only thing you can do in that situation is make the best of it. So I loaded the film up and set out to see how it would perform in this brighter morning light. The first site I wanted to photograph in Mammoth Hot Spring was Pallet Spring. It's a gorgeous spring with a lot of vibrant colors, and I thought it would be a great opportunity to see how Cinestill 400D handles that variety of colors in one photograph in a landscape. You can see that the colors came out warm, soft, and has a really nice palette, for lack of a better word. Normally, I don't enjoy shooting landscapes in this type of sun when there's not even any clouds in the sky. But I felt like with this photo, it worked. It's interesting. The colors are soft, but still vibrant with an extremely pleasing warmth to them. But frankly, I was blown away by how low grain this film is and how clean the image looks in the scan. Then I followed the boardwalk down to take a look at the Travertine Terrace of Pallet Springs. These terraces were really bright and getting hit hard by that morning sun. The white reflection I thought was really hard to deal with in a wide shot. Even though the image came out well exposed and I thought the film handled the highlight very nicely, I wasn't pleased with the way it looked front lit with no depth or contrast to it. I put on the 200 millimeter and took a tighter shot of some of the more deeply hued parts of the travertine. I was much happier with that photograph. And I was really surprised to see the sharpness and level of detail that Cinestill 40D has. These incredible colors that come out of these hot springs are made by what's called thermophiles. And those are actually living organisms that thrive in this hot water and noxious gases that are frankly lethal to humans. And many scientists actually believe that on other planets with conditions that are seemingly unlivable and too hostile for human life could harbor life like these thermophiles. If they can survive here in these conditions, why couldn't they survive anywhere else? My last photograph I took here at the hot springs was at the Canary Spring. 
I was really attracted to the scale of this terrace, and the colors were interesting too. But most of all, I was interested in this juxtaposition between the life of these extreme organisms living in these terraces and the dead trees that were standing there. To me, it really illustrated well the fact that life as we know it doesn't necessarily have to be all the life that's out there. This time in the morning light, I thought it had the right combination of texture and shadow to give me a striking landscape and is something I look often for when I'm shooting. I didn't take as many photographs this morning as I planned on or really wanted to, but the light was a bit harsher than I expected it to be. So on the walk back, even though there was a lot of interesting things to see, the light didn't really excite me. So I didn't want to spend too much more of my film at this site. So I headed back to camp to wait out the hottest part of the day and get some rest before I went to Upper Geyser Basin to shoot that evening. In Yellowstone National Park, because of how far north it is and in the height of summer, the time between your best light of the morning and your best light of the evening can be 14 hours. So if you really want to focus on the best photography you can get, you've got to give yourself some time in the middle part of the day to rest and relax and rejuvenate so you can make the most of the morning and the most of the evening. Now, Upper Geyser Basin is one of the most popular locations in Yellowstone National Park. After all, this is where Old Faithful is. But I decided I didn't want to focus on Old Faithful this evening. I really wanted to put my efforts in the other geysers around the park and to see what they might offer in this light. I was really hoping I was going to get a chance to see one of these geysers go off and get a great photo on the Pentax, but really you would have to be in the right place at the right time, and these geysers are spread out over an immense, immense area. But you could always get lucky. So I entered the boardwalk trail right at Castle Geyser, and it really looked like it wanted to go off. It was bubbling, it was spurting, there was steam coming out, it just felt imminent. But I waited, nothing happened, I decided, let's get a photograph anyway. The light was starting to get interesting, and I really enjoyed the geological formation of Castle Geyser. As I walked down the boardwalk, I came to a bridge that spanned across Firehole River. Looking northwest up the river as the sun was setting gave a striking view of the landscape, lighting up the steam of the fumaroles on the banks of the river and showing great color and contrast that I couldn't pass up. Even though there was flare in my lens in this shot from the sun setting just off frame, I thought it added a great atmosphere to this shot, and I think the natural warm tone of Cinestill really added to the elements here. And just over the bridge, this gurgling little hot spring on the bank caught my eye. I thought the colors around it were really beautiful, and Cinestill handled this shot incredibly well. The details that this film can resolve and the vibrant soft hues of its colors created one of my favorite images up to this point. And again, I can't speak enough about how fine-grained it is. Further north up the basin, I came across this beautiful pool. I feel like if I could have gotten a bit higher up, the photograph would have been more exceptional. But even still, I seem to be constantly impressed with the color reproduction of Cinestill 400D. At this point, the hunt is still on, and I'm looking for a geyser that's getting ready to go. Sometimes they seem to give you a warning. You can almost feel it in the ground, or you can hear it coming from the geyser itself. So I'm hoping I can find what I'm looking for soon. And as I round the corner, I see in the distance something happening. I can see a big plume of steam coming up over the treetops a bit further north up the boardwalk. So I make a beeline in that direction and end up at Riverside Geyser in the middle of its eruption. Just as I got there and was ready with my camera, the sun dipped behind the trees and I missed a beautiful golden light on that plume of steam. Even though the photograph is not one of my favorites, it was one of the most spectacular experiences I had at the park. After watching the Riverside Geyser eruption, I wanted to keep heading north to reach Morning Glory Pool. I walked across another bridge over Firehole River, this time showing another incredible landscape of fumaroles along the bank and a sunset sky in the background. Because the sun had dipped below the horizon here, the sky was a good bit brighter from the tree line in the background. 
This is the first time I've seen the classic Sinistel halation in one of my 400D shots. It's fairly prominent here, and depending on how you feel about halation, could be a pro or a con to this film. My last stop at Upper Geyser Basin for the evening is at Morning Glory Pool. I think this is one of the most interesting features of the Upper Geyser Basin. It has a feeling of being a bottomless pit, and I love the gradation of colors from deep blue to a bright green to an incredible yellow, all ringed by this bright white line. The light was getting extremely low here, and I only had a few minutes to get a shot. In the end, the warm red hue of the last bit of sun cast an interesting shade around the morning glory pool, and I think I have a unique and interesting shot of this feature. At that point, I knew it was time to get back to the camp get to sleep, and get as much rest as possible. Because the next morning, I was gonna get up at sunrise again and head toward Yellowstone Grand Canyon to photograph that in the early morning light. Of course, when I got up and got out the door in that dawn light and started driving, I noticed once again how incredible that morning light is. This time, I decided to chase the light a little bit, and I let myself stop a few times to grab some shots along the Yellowstone River as I went. It's all fine and good to have a plan. And I think when you're visiting a national park for photography, you need to have a plan. You need to have some kind of guideline that you can follow so that you don't become overwhelmed. However, don't lose sight of serendipity. What I mean by that is nature's gonna offer you opportunities for shots that you didn't see coming. And you need to be open to those and be willing to stop and go down that direction because that very well may give you some of the best shots you're gonna get on your entire trip. As I headed into the Yellowstone Grand Canyon parking lot, I waved to the overnight crew leaving for the day and made my way up to the scenic overlook. Having been here to this same spot just a few days before, but during the height of the day, the thing that really struck me about this moment was that there was absolutely no one else here. I couldn't believe that I was at Yellowstone Grand Canyon, one of the premier sites of the entire park and not a single other person was there with me. For me, I learned a very valuable lesson here. Most people don't wanna get up that early. Most people don't wanna put in the effort to be at these places right when first light hits. So if you can do it, you can not only get some of the best photography you're gonna have of anywhere, but you're gonna have a beautiful, quiet experience with you and nature and no one else around to disturb that. When you wake up and it's still dark outside, it's really hard to get out of bed. But I can't stress enough how worth it it is and how happy you'll be with yourself if you actually go through with it. Getting to see the canyon falls this early in the morning was really a beautiful experience. And since this site was so quiet this morning, I decided to explore further on and look for other trails and overlooks along the canyon rim that gave beautiful views, each one of them seeming to get better and better than the last. It wasn't long though, until people started to show up. So I decided that was my cue to head out and rest for the day. As I was driving back to my campsite, I couldn't believe the number of cars headed back the other direction, no doubt headed to the canyon. I'm really happy I didn't have to jostle with other photographers for the exact same photograph. It also makes me feel like the photographs I got were unique 
and were special because there was no one else there photographing the same thing. And I'm the only person that has that exact moment captured. After having a nice day of rest and hanging out at the campsite, I had a pretty light evening planned. I really only wanted to get two photographs. One was an overlook of the Grand Prismatic Spring, and the other was a photograph of Old Faithful. I took my kids out with me this evening because I thought they might enjoy the hike, and I knew they wanted to see Old Faithful. So we did our hike up to the Grand Prismatic Spring Overlook. While typically I like to see a few clouds in the sky for a little overhead texture in my landscape photographs, I was really hoping for more sun today. I was not so fortunate on this one. There was a bit of overcast, the sun was behind clouds, and the colors were altogether a bit muted. Even so, Cinestill 400D performed admirably and showed the soft-hued colors of Grand Prismatic Spring in this light very nicely. After that, I didn't have a lot of big hopes for my photograph of Old Faithful. I really wasn't doing it because I wanted a photograph of Old Faithful. I just felt like I should get a photograph of Old Faithful. So down we went to the site and sat on the benches and waited for the eruption. A lot of times, Old Faithful can be predicted quite accurately as far as when it's going to erupt. However, this was not one of those times. The schedule said the most likely eruption was going to happen around 720. Well, 720 came and 720 passed. I was getting worried I was going to lose all light and not be able to get a photograph at all. But just before I lost every bit of sun, at 815, the eruption started. There was just enough light for me to get a handheld shot at 1 30th of a second. While I don't think this is the best photograph of Old Faithful ever taken, I think the colors here are actually really spectacular. The blues and the purples and the steam and the water coming out of the geyser are really incredible and juxtaposed so nicely with that sliver of yellow sunset cutting across the sky in the background. The next day was going to be my last opportunity to photograph in Yellowstone, because the day after that, I was going to start heading home to New Mexico. This was my last chance to take advantage of that early morning light and that dawn atmosphere of Yellowstone National Park. I drove out on the Ring Road along the Yellowstone River because that's where I had seen the most dramatic and interesting landscapes before. My first stop was on a hilltop overlooking Yellowstone River, enveloped in a thick fog, and the soft hues of the sky was just starting to brighten up. Cinestill 400D did a great job with these colors, never being overbearing or too saturated, but still faithfully reproducing the colors in a way that was almost more pleasing than real life. As I ventured down into the valley, there was another bison on the road, just like the ones that had greeted me on the days before. I took it as a good omen that there was going to be more interesting things for me up ahead. I only took a couple of photographs, but I really loved the ones I got. However, I was running low on film. I had plans that evening to photograph along Black Sand Basin and also to catch the sunset at Grand Prismatic Spring with my last few frames. When the evening rolled around, it was time to come to Black Sand Basin and I explored the boardwalk of the area and again was absolutely shocked and surprised that no one else was there. At Black Sand Basin, I wanted to photograph some of the details of life that lives in these toxic hot springs.
My last image that I took of opalescent pool at Black Sand Basin, I felt like I really reached the boundaries of dynamic range on Cinestill 400D. The shadows fall off a lot here, and a little bit more than I would have really liked. My last spot that I had planned to photograph on this trip was Grand Prismatic Spring nearby. As the light was getting low, it looked like there was going to be a really spectacular sunset. And this is a prime spot if you visit Yellowstone to see the sunset. I walked up the boardwalk to the main area of the site and thought maybe I could get a good shot of Excelsior Geyser here before I got to Grand Prismatic. However, Excelsior is an exceedingly hot pool, and the cool air of the late day, there was just too much steam rising off of the Excelsior geyser for it to really make an interesting photograph. Soon after that, I got to Grand Prismatic Spring, and this is a spot that never disappoints for sunset. The colors are absolutely spectacular, and the way the water reflects the sky is an incredible sight to witness. For my last image, I had to fight the crowds a little bit and jostle for a position to get the image I wanted. After I had shot my last frame, the only thing left to do was to enjoy the sunset and the incredible view for the last time before I headed home. I can't tell you all how much it means to me that you watch these videos and come along on my journeys with me. If you enjoy what I'm doing, subscribe, like, leave a comment below, tell me what you think. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.